The next career that I'm going to be talking about is by far the highest paying career on this list, so you better pay attention if money is really important to you. Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dove and my channel is designed to help you stay organized and educated so that you can live your dream life. In this video, we will be talking about the top paying careers in neuroscience. So get ready to make some money and let's get started. So the first career that we'll be talking about is a machine learning engineer. So this is a person that designed artificial intelligence software to enable machines to run on their own without being programmed to do specific tasks. So the machine is basically learning as it goes. This person is going to be combining a bunch of different subjects together, such as behavioral neuroscience, computational neuroscience, and computer science to enable them to complete their job. So a machine learning engineer may work with a group of people or a team at a research center or at like a regular company where they're designing software to help run different machines. They can be creating machines that are helpful for clinical purposes, maybe fitness purposes, or just everyday use. The average salary for this is around $120,000, but it will depend based on the company that you're working for and also the location of where your job is at. The lowest salary that I did see was around $78,000, and then the highest I saw was $150,000. But again, it could probably be higher based on the company that you're working at and also your experience and location and a variety of factors. So the experience that you need to become a machine learning engineer is you need to have a bachelor's degree. And so this could be in computer science because you're going to be needing experience in terms of like coding, such as like learning a coding language like Python or Java. And then you also may want experience in a different subject area that can help you with the different types of software that you're going to be creating. So if you don't get a degree in computer science, you can also take coding courses throughout your college career or after college you can go and do a computer science boot camp or computer science course at another university or through different private services. There are tons and tons of different computer science courses online so I'm sure you guys can find one that would suit you. You could also try and double major with neuroscience or just major in neuroscience if you wanted to because you may be creating algorithms or codes specifically for machines to be able to kind of think like humans so that may be a great major for you to have. Depending on your university, you may have courses that overlap between computer science and neuroscience. I know at my school we did. So there was some computational neuroscience courses that talked about coding and different software that you could develop to help you analyze your data better. So this may be an option for you. All right, so the next career that I'll be talking about is becoming a pharmaceutical scientist. So a pharmaceutical scientist is a person who is involved in the development, testing, and manufacturing of new drugs. As you guys can see with the new vaccines that are coming out, this is a very important job for many people and you need to be able to do the job correctly so that you're making medication and vaccines that can be effective. So the average salary for this job is around $85,000, but it depends on the location of your job and also the company that you're working for and your experience level. So in order to become a pharmaceutical scientist, you're going to need to get a bachelor's degree. Some universities offer a bachelor's degree in pharmaceutical sciences. So if you go to one of those universities, that would be a great degree for you to earn. But if not, a biology degree or a chemistry degree would also be great. In addition to getting a degree, you're going to want to also get experience working in a lab and also maybe with a pharmaceutical company so you can know like exactly what you would be doing day to day. And then once you do that, then you can apply to get a job. So once you're in a job, you may also want to go back to school to get a master's degree or a PhD so you can move up in your level of like kind of maybe overseeing a pharmaceutical product development or maybe seeing and testing and like heading the overall experimentation that has to do with the creation of a new drug. So if you want to have like a higher rank in the company, then you may want to go and get a higher degree. The next career that I'm going to be talking about is by far the highest paying career on this list. So you better pay attention if money is really important to you. All right, so the next career that I'm talking about is becoming a neurosurgeon. I'm sure you could have guessed that. I also have a video on how to become a neurosurgeon, so you can check that out. I'll link it above for you guys. I also have several videos about neuroscience on my channel, so feel free to go and watch those. I have a playlist too, and I'll link that below for you guys. All right, so a neurosurgeon is a doctor that specializes in injuries and illnesses that affect the brain, spinal cord, and nervous system as a whole. So this person is going to be working with patients to do a lot of surgical methods, but also non-surgical methods to help them and kind of alleviate the symptoms that they're having and alleviate the illnesses and treat the illnesses if they can treat them. The average salary for this doctor is $395,000 and that can increase or decrease based on like your experience, 
the location of where you're working, the if you're working for like a private or public hospital, there's just like a bunch of different things that can cause your salary to vary. So keep that in mind when choosing the actual place you want to work and it can also vary based on like your specialty too, like your subspecialty within neuroscience. So my neuroscience or neurosurgeon video, I did talk about the different subspecialties that you could go into so you can watch that if you want to. But based on the subspecialty, you can be working with a certain pa patient population or a certain like area within the brain or just like a certain illness that you like regularly want to see. And with that, that can also change your salary. So in order to become a neurosurgeon, I'm going to just like go through like the steps really quickly. You need to go to undergrad, then go to medical school, and then go to residency. The residency is pretty long. And after the residency, you are considered a neurosurgeon. Following residency, you can go and do a fellowship. There are tons of different subspecialties that you can specialize into if you really want to just focus on a certain portion of the brain. And then after that, you can practice. In addition to neurosurgery, there are also two other kind of neuroscience heavy physician jobs that you can have. And these do pay like a significant amount, but not as much as being a neurosurgeon. So you could become a neurologist or a psychiatrist. So a neurologist is a person who is very similar to a neurosurgeon. They focus on the brain and the spinal cord and illnesses and disorders that impact the brain and the spinal cord. But they do not really do surgeries. They do different procedures that can help alleviate some of the pain and also prescribe medication. But they don't really do surgeries like neurosurgeons do. And the average salary for this person would be around $200,000. A psychiatrist is a person that is involved in treating and specializes in treating illnesses that impact like mental health illnesses. So also dealing with the brain but in like a different sense. And so this person will have a salary of around $200,000. And for both of these jobs, you'll have to go to medical school too and also complete a residency program, but the residency program is much shorter than that of a neurosurgeon. So keep that in mind if you want to also go into a different field, you might not want to do surgery, that these two options are great for you. The next job that I'm talking about is becoming a principal investigator at a university. So this is a job that is very research heavy and I have a bunch of research videos on my channel if you want to go check them out. I'll link some of those above and I also worked at a university in college with a principal investigator and I thought that was like a very fun experience. So I do have some vlogs kind of explaining that too if you want to check those out too. So a principal investigator is the head of a research lab at a university and they are in charge of leading a team of researchers to investigate a specific research topic. So this person may also be in charge of applying to grants depending on the university and they also may be having a teaching role at the university but also depends on their job and what they specifically want to do through their career. So they can investigate a variety of different topics and different science topics if you would like to but specifically in neuroscience they can investigate and specialize in cognitive neuroscience, developmental neuroscience, a whole bunch of different subject within neuroscience. They can also specifically look at a certain animal model. A lot of um, different labs will use and focus on a specific animal and just use that to test out their experiments. So the average salary for a PI is around $100,000, but it will depend on the location of where you're working and also your rank as a professor. That also indicates a lot about whether or not you're going to have a higher salary or a lower salary. And in addition to being a professor, you could also become a dean of a university or have a more of an advising role too. So there are a bunch of different things that you could add on to your role as a principal investigator at a university. So in order to become a principal investigator, you're going to want to go to undergrad and get a degree. You can get a degree in like pretty much anything, but it might be more beneficial to you if you get a degree in some sort of science subject. And then also go through and work with a research lab while you're there so you can really get the experience of working with a PI and also understanding whether or not you like research or not. Then you'll go to grad school, so you'll get a PhD degree. And then after this, you'll go to a postdoctoral fellowship. And so this may be about one to two years or even three years. And you may have to do multiple postdoctoral fellowships before you get a job as a professor. And then once you're a professor, you can decide to add additional roles to your job or not. And throughout this experience or throughout your career or path towards becoming a um, PI, you're going to also want to get experience writing grants and writing papers because that's what your job, a big portion of your job is going to be. So in order to do that during like undergrad and your grad school experience, you're going to make sure you're applying to grants so you can understand like how funding works and different things that you're going to need to do when you're running your own lab. 
So the next career that I'll be talking about is a neuroscience consultant. So this is the person that's going to be working with a business or a company to enable them to solve problems in terms of neuroscience. So a company may need more information about how to target a certain population of people and this neuroscience consultant will help them with understanding like different neurological diseases or neurological or neuroscience heavy terms that may be useful for that certain patient population or they may be helpful in connecting the company with different researchers in terms of like neuroscience researchers that may be helpful to understand or give the company more background knowledge on the specific product that they are marketing out to people. For this job, you may be traveling a lot, so keep that in mind if you don't really like to travel, this might not be a good job for you, but it also will depend on the company that you're working for. And you also may be working longer hours because you'll have to really help the company when it comes to big problems that they have. So the average salary for this job is around $100,000 if you have a PhD. If you have a master's degree, it'll be around $60,000. In terms of requirements, you don't really need to have any other additional degree after undergraduate degree, but if you want to make more money, you're going to need to get an additional degree or have additional experience. This next job is actually a bonus job for you guys. So this is working for a government agency such as the NIH, FDA, or CDC, or even a global agency if you would like to. And so some of these jobs at this at an agency can be similar to some of the jobs that I mentioned um, previously. So keep that in mind. It could have a similar role just working for the government, but working for the government, you may have additional perks or benefits with your job. So some of the jobs may include being like a head scientist of a lab or a PI, like I mentioned before, or maybe even doing public policy or law. So there are a variety of different degrees you can get to work for a government agency. So the average salary for this job is around $100,000, but it's going to depend based on the specific role that you're in. So if you're working more as like a lower like researcher, then you might not be making as much as compared to someone who's like a senior analyst or the head of an entire organization will be making a lot more money than you. So in order to have this job, you're there aren't like you can start like pretty low level and then work your way up, or you can go and get a higher degree if you want to. So if you're just going out of college, then you're probably going to be getting a lower job or a lower paying job. And so you won't be making as much as money. So you can get a bachelor's degree in like pretty much any subject, but it will be based on like what specifically you want to do. So if you want to do something, if you want to get a bachelor's degree in neuroscience, then you might go and work for a neuroscience lab or be a neuroscience consultant through one of the government agencies. And then if you went and got a master's degree or a PhD, then you might be like the head of a lab or being like a senior scientist on a certain experiment or a senior scientist covering a certain process going through or a certain or writing grants or reviewing grants for people. You can even go and get a JD degree if you want to work in public policy or law and some of the public policy concerning neuroscience or neuroscience medication or maybe patent law, different things like that. So keep in mind there's like tons of different job opportunities within government agencies. Some of them may be similar to different jobs that you see with private companies and other, other jobs may be more concerning the law and different regulations on comp other companies. All of these jobs sound so freaking interesting to me, so please let me know in the comments below if you're considering any of these jobs. And if you already have one of these jobs, let us know, like, how is it? Is it really, like, a good job to go for? Like, let us know your experience in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, like, comment, and subscribe. Bye!